Okay, my name is uh, Sandy or Alexander Gilles, and I'm the consultant for market education for First Metro Securities Brokerage, which means that we are a broker and allow clients to be able to buy shares and sell shares at the stock exchange. Meanwhile, I'm consultant for market education, which means that all the new clients normally go through some orientation or introduction introduction to stocks, introduction to technical analysis, to fundamental analysis, so that they can make intelligent choices. And I guide you in how to design your portfolio as well. And today we have the topic of how to select the investment fund that suits you. And our title is, uh, what should I buy? Uh, exchange traded fund or a mutual fund or some other investment fund? I will go through the different types of investment fund that you could choose from, and then it's really up to you afterwards to decide which will serve you best. Um, and uh, we will also go into the benefit of having an expert manage your money. And the name of the expert is normally mutual fund or some other investment fund. In the first place, you probably have cash in the bank, and you probably need the cash this year uh, or next year as well. And then there might be money that you want to save for five years or 10 years. Uh, that, that kind of money that you need for five or 10 years can be placed in bonds because bonds are a safe and secure way of uh, investing money. Meanwhile, if you want to invest money for longer term, stocks are really the best way because they can produce 12% returns for the for 15 years or longer. I've measured the movement of stocks for the past 30 years and I've, I've seen that they've gone up 8% positive per year for the past 30 years. Meanwhile, I also checked what stocks have done for the last 15 years and I calculated that they went up 12% a year. Meanwhile, bonds go up three to 5% per year guaranteed and secure, and cash just 0.5%. So it's really up to you uh, how fast you want your money to grow. Now, let's say that you want to invest a portion of your money in stocks because you've decided that some of your money, you'd like it to grow 8 or 10 or 12%. Nothing is guaranteed, but at least you will have a chance to make your money grow sana 10%, kung pwede sana 15% a year. Then, if you know how to invest, then you can do so directly. You can buy your own stocks. It's cheaper that way. It's like buying goods in Divisoria. It's cheaper. Meanwhile, if you want to hire an expert, it's like hiring a driver for your car. It's like hiring somebody to design a house for you. Then you have to pay that architect. You have to pay the driver. But at least you get the driving or the house design that you want. You just have to pay an expert. Um, what happens when you invest by yourself? Well, you learn, you get tired, you spend a lot of time trying to figure out what stock to buy. And uh, you do have a lot of fun, you get the thrill, and you also get the stress. Now, if you pay an expert, they do the decisions for you, they spend their whole day trying to decide what stocks to buy for their client, and they get the stress. So if you uh, want to learn, let's look on the left side of the slide, if you want to learn how to uh, go about the stock market, you'll have to do it yourself. Of course, it will take a lot of effort and a lot of time on your part. Uh, as what some people say, uh, can I make a career out of this? Um, and then you do get the excitement of being in stocks, and then you also get the wear and tear on your emotions because some, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. So if you think that this is too much stress for you, then you'll have to pay an expert, and they'll do all the decisions for you. They will report to you. They will spend all of their time uh, on it. Anyway, they have lots of experts assisting them, and they get the stress. So, must relax the jan. So, what do you think is more suitable for you? Do you want to drive your car yourself and get tired and sleepy, or you hire a driver? Uh, what the advantage of having a driver? You don't have to worry about uh, traffic or parking or uh, traffic rules, and uh, you. But you have to pay him a salary. That's the difference. So will I invest in stocks or in investment funds? Well, with stocks, um, you have to choose your own stocks. And in the first five years, you normally go by trial and error. Some of your stocks will go up and some will go down. And you might not uh, know exactly why. 
this is hands-on learning. It's like practical arts, like learning how to drive a car. And you will get the uh, fun experience of driving your stock portfolio, similar to the fun of driving a car or learning how to fly an airplane or a helicopter, but it's equally dangerous. In the meantime, if you rely on an investment fund, then the experts will do the work for you. They will buy only the promising stocks and not necessarily the top 30. Uh, what I'm referring to is that there's a set of stocks in the stock exchange, which are the biggest and the most actively traded. They are the top 30. And uh, the experts sometimes buy the top 30, sometimes they buy the next 100 smaller stocks. Uh, they don't necessarily buy the, the biggest and the best top 30. Okay, so, so now you're getting uh, closer to the decision point. Will you buy stocks directly by yourself? Um, if yes, then you have a choice. You can buy stocks every month and then wait, or you can buy and sell stocks, in which case you will trade. Right, so in the first case, when you buy stocks every month, you keep adding to your portfolio, and you keep uh, you you have more and more money in stocks. First, you have ten thousand in stocks, and then thirty thousand, and then fifty thousand, and then seventy thousand, and then your stock portfolio hopefully grows over time. If you buy and sell, then you can uh, buy ten thousand worth and wait for it to grow to eleven or twelve, then sell it. Then you buy 12,000 worth, wait for it to grow to be 13 or 14 or 15,000 worth, then you sell the stocks. And then you can buy 15,000 worth and progressively uh, make money. If you're lucky, then most of your trades will be positive and make money. But um, sometimes some trades also lose money because uh, you buy a stock at 10 pesos per share, it goes down to eight, and then you sell it at eight because you're afraid it might go lower. So that's what, what, that's what I mean by uh, enduring the stress of buying stocks which don't actually behave the way you expect, that they don't go up uh, all the way, so they sometimes go down first. Now, uh, what do I mean by buying via an expert? Well, there's investment funds, which are companies that invest your money for you in exchange for 2% fees at the start and approximately 2% every year. That's the so-called salary of the driver. Uh, if you hire a driver to drive your car, you have to pay him some kind of sueldo. And then you'll, at least you are more relaxed riding a car. But uh, if you want, you can drive it yourself and you don't have to pay any, any driver. Uh, if you do want to rely on some investment fund, most of them charge 2% on, on day one and then 2% every year. That's like uh, deducted automatically from the fund. And uh, when they report to you, this is the money that you have net of the fees, right? So one example of investment fund is a mutual fund. What happens is that you open an account with a mutual fund company, you buy shares of the mutual funds, and stock experts manage your money. If, they, if the mutual fund says that we offer a bond fund, then they might have to hire bond experts for those bond funds. Generally, mutual funds are run by stock experts, and so therefore they normally specialize in stocks. Now, there is something else called the unit investment trust fund, which is a bank product. You go to a bank, and then you ask them for trust funds which are open to the public, and you ask if you can please buy some units of that trust fund. In the trust fund, uh, their strong point being banks, is bonds because they're very good with loans and bonds are just government loans and so therefore they're expert with loans and bonds. So normally bank uh, professionals are very familiar with bonds and they can be expert with bonds. So they can help you to manage your money if you want it to be in government bonds. Uh, meanwhile, if the, uh, if the UITF also offers a equity or stock UITF, then they normally go outside and hire some stock experts for the stock funds. Now, there's something else called a unit, a variable unit linked fund, which means that an insurance company is selling shares of an investment fund and uh, they connect it with an insurance policy. Um, they are experts in selling. They can uh, have agencies, consisting of salesmen who go out and persuade you 
to buy insurance. And aside from the insurance, buy investment funds. So why not buy two in one? And that yung two in one, that's what you call a variable unit linked fund, which means that you put money in in that fund, much of the money goes to insurance for the first three years, and then after that, majority of the money starts going into investment funds. Okay, so that's the brief and simple definition. The insurance company is expert in insurance, but they're also very expert in investing long term. So they have bond experts uh, and also stock market experts. And um, they sometimes offer investment funds that are open to the public. Uh, in general, they're, uh, all of these funds from mutual to unit investment trust fund to variable unit linked funds, they're all run by experts. So you will really have a quandary trying to decide where to put your money because in many cases, all of them are equally good. So the only way they differentiate themselves is sometimes via customer service. Okay, um, more about the background of mutual funds and UITF. The mutual fund is normally operated by a stockbroker who branches out and says, to the clients, if you actually want me to manage your money and you don't have the time or you don't have the interest or you don't have the familiarity with stocks, then I can do that for you. You just buy shares of my mutual fund and talk to some of my sales agents who will sell it. Yeah, so that's a stockbroker who sets up a mutual fund. It's a separate company. It accepts money and then it it takes advantage of the expertise of the broker given his long familiarity with stocks. Uh, normally, he would be very expert with stocks, so therefore, that's his selling point. Uh, just talk to the sales agent, and then they will sell you shares of the mutual fund. How much do you want to buy? I think normally it's 5000 at the beginning, uh, and then 1000 additional every month. So you can start with 5000 pesos. Next month, add another 1000 worth. After that, another 1000 worth. After that, another 1,000 worth or any thousand worth, as long as it's a minimum of 1,000 additional on the next few months. You can even start with 100,000 and the second month add 20,000, something like that. Pwede yun. Yung, yung unit investment trust fund is sold by a bank. It's operated by a bank and it's offered at bank branches, usually nationwide. All you have to do is talk to the branch officers and say, how do I by the UITF and they will normally point you to the investment department or the trust department and and uh, off invite you to fill up a form and then to uh, transfer money from your bank deposit to the UITF. So your money, the, the convenience of that is the money is shifted from your bank deposit account to a UITF account with the same bank. So it's like you trust the bank, you trust that they're good with deposits and hopefully they're also good with investing in stocks. Okay, so um, I just wanted to tell you that uh, mutual funds originated as a mutual benefit fund whereby clients make their own insurance and eventually it was shortened to mutual fund. So we just pull our money and invest it. Um, basic uh, way to decide is should I buy my own stocks or should I rely on investment funds? Well, if you have the skills and you have the time and you have the inclination to buy your own stocks, go ahead and buy your own stocks trial and error. This is how you learn. If you think that you it's too difficult and that it's too confusing and that you don't have the time anyway, um, therefore just rely on investment funds. That's what I would suggest. Even if they charge 2% a year, that's all right because uh, they do provide expertise, diversification, and convenience. Do I want to have fun investing in stocks? Ah, you have to buy your own. You have to buy your own, learn how it, why it goes up or down, uh, how it responds to the economy, how it responds to international news. You're going to have a lot of fun or you're going to have a lot of heartache in case the stock price goes down. If you think it's not fun at all to lose money in stocks, then just go to the investment funds. I, I, I don't understand how this thing works and I don't want to lose any more money, for example, no? uh, if, you, if it's not fun for you. Now, let's say that you want to invest in the most economical way possible 
by saving on transactions costs, then I'm afraid you'll have to buy your own stocks because this is the cheapest way to get invested. Buy stocks, you only pay about 1.2% for the entire transaction to buy and to sell. Meanwhile, the investment funds, you pay 2% on day one and then 2% every year. So uh, it does cost you some thousands of pesos. If you think that they are going to do you a, a big service anyway, then okay lang, I'll just pay because at least they saved me the heartache of uh, being confused and uh, befuddled about how come the stock prices go down. I thought they're guaranteed to go up, hindi pala, etc. Now, okay, so if you can take the stress, then buy your own stocks. Okay, now there is such a thing as an equity mutual fund. This is a mutual fund which is invested in stocks and they try to buy the stocks that will tend to go up. Meaning we'll do our very best, our expert best, every month and every week and every day to buy the stocks that we think will go up the next few days or next few weeks and next few months. And some of our equity mutual funds in the Philippines have gone up 20% a year for the past 24 years. Others have gone up 15% a year for the past 15 years. Okay, so you check the records of the investment companies to see which one of them have had a good track record. Because if they are really expert, they will buy stocks that tend to go up and sell it at the peak and then transfer the cash to other stocks which are down and then wait for those to go up and then sell those. So they have lots of things uh, going on at the same time, lots of trades which were just recently bought and then they go up and then you sell it at the peak and then you transfer the cash to another stock. So they, they have that in their landscape. Uh, they're very good with that. Now let's say that you read a, a study, a statistical study that said th that the equity index went up 8% a year for the past 30 years, which is actually true. Uh, our PSEI index is the uh, number of points for the top 30 stocks. It's a number that started with 100 points in the 1970s. It was 1,000 points by the 1990s, and now it's 7,300 points. So you have to believe that from 1,000 points in the 1990s, uh, actually it was also back to 1,000 points by 2003, and then now it's 7,300. Well, that went up uh, a lot, times seven, in the last uh, 15 or so years. So that is very good. That went up about 12% a year. This, therefore, this equity index is very, very good. It gives you the benefit of approximately 12% over, uh, over 15 years, the past 15 years. And I'm hoping and I'm forecasting that it might also go up around 12% a year for the the next 15 years. But you have to be um, very statistically trusting that the equity index will perform uh, best because it consists of the top 30, the biggest and the best managed companies in the country and hopefully their stocks will be the ones most purchased by institutional investors and therefore the top traded stocks, most liquid, and therefore they will perform the best over the next 15 years. If you do that, if you do believe that uh, in the statistics and you don't mind waiting, then go ahead by the top 30. They will copy the PSE index faithfully and then you will just uh, watch the index moving over time. Uh, this I recommend for beginners. Now there's uh, another thing called a balanced fund, which is half stocks and half bonds. The benefit of a balanced fund is that um, there are people who are scared of stocks and if the mutual fund company tells them that the balance fund is half bonds, they think that bonds are safe and secure and that they're going to limit any possible losses on stocks. This is actually a bad idea in my personal opinion because uh, in the last few years, uh, the bond funds have delivered negative returns. Uh, what happens is that if you buy a bond, for 1,000 pesos and then the government uh, pays you 30, 40 or 50 pesos a year, then if you hold the bond to maturity, meaning for the entire five years that it's supposed to run, then you will get your 50 pesos a year plus you get your 1,000 pesos back on the fifth year. Ang tawag dun is hold to maturity. Now that's the 
a safe and conservative way to own a bond. The trouble is that if you own a bond which is uh, available for sale or uh, traded security, then there are certain central bank rules that say that, you know what, you have to mark that bond in your books at market value, or nick nickname for that is mark to market. So therefore, the 1,000 peso bond uh, could go down to 900 pesos in value, could go up to 1,100, down again to 900, up again to 1,100, or maybe down to 800. So because of that rule that you have to market to the market price, then certain bonds can actually go down from 1,000 to 800. So talo pa. Uh, that's what happens when there's a central bank rule and SEC rule that says the bonds have to be marked to market. And that's what happens with balance funds. Initially, it was a good idea, pero in practice, you can have a negative 20% return on your bond fund. So I, I really don't suggest it. It sounds good in, in theory, but not in practice. So I would avoid a balance fund. Now, what is a variable unit linked fund? Um, this means that you go to the insurance company and you're buying a, a VUL, which is, uh, again, uh, very nice sounding in theory because it says you're going to get an investment fund and then you're going to get insurance also. Now, uh, according to all the people I've interviewed about VUL, what actually happens is that you spend the first few years paying for insurance first, and then later on, maybe in the middle of the second year or early in the third year, money starts to flow towards the investment fund. And so on the third year, if you ask, kamusta na yung investments ko? Ay, sorry sir, hindi pa kami nakaumpisa bumili ng investment fund. Binibili pa namin yung insurance mo. Akala ko ba investment fund yan na may insurance? Actually, it looks like it's insurance first and investment fund later. So kung ganun pala, you might as well just buy an insurance separately and investment fund separately. So on the right panel, I show you insurance company investment funds. Uh, for example, there's Philam Life uh, Asset Management. They offer you uh, investment funds as well as Sun Life and even Manulife. If it's plain and simple investment fund, with no insurance attached, then I would say it's a good idea. It runs just like a mutual fund, but the fees are slightly higher because they are a big insurance company with lots more costs, and, and, uh, but also lots more credibility. So if you have a very good relationship with your insurance agent, and he or she is a very reliable, dependable person who has been very good to you in serving your insurance needs, then maybe you can tell him or her, sige, bili mo ka ng investment funds. Uh, then it's easy. All you have to do is, okay, I want to put some money in investment funds and the same agent will service your needs. It's a lot easy, uh, easier for you than having to go to a mutual fund office, filling up a form, wala kang kilala dun, and you don't know whether it's a good idea. And you got, usually don't, you don't have anyone there assuring you that it will work out okay. <laughs> if there's a sales agent of the insurance company, normally they give you a lot of reassurance. So that's one of the benefits of, that's, that's the, one of the reasons why the insurance company has tremendous sales in the hundreds of billions. Meanwhile, mutual funds are only in the tens of billions. Okay, what's private banking? It's a big international bank usually that, that, that tells you, park your $5 million with me and I will invest it expertly, but you have to pay about 4% a year. Now, if you like the international character and if you trust the bank and if you have $5 million anyway, then any 4% means nothing to you because you're rich anyway, then okay lang, then you invest with the private banking funds because it's really prestigious and it really sounds uh, tremendous, but I can assure you that they don't necessarily provide performance better than uh, local equity funds. Sometimes the local equity funds outperform the international funds. Later, I'll show you some examples of local equities that give 25% a year and international equities that provide 20 or 15% a year or even less. Um, okay, so I think at this point, okay, I, I'm going, I'm repeating this slide already. I'm gonna shift now to the Excel file. Uh, excuse me a moment. Uh, ito. Okay. Okay, so I hope you can see the screen okay. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so let's say that you do have uh, money in the bank. Uh, for the, just for the sake of example, you have 390,000 pesos in the bank. And then it's growing at 1% a year. Very uh, poor. Because uh, you say that it's safer in the bank and you have not heard of anything called bonds or stocks. Okay, so it's unfamiliar. So then you start asking around, where should I uh, really park my money? Should I keep it in the bank or put it in bonds or put it in stocks? Well, um, if, you, if you have, for example, 300,000 pesos of your money in the bank, for example, no? then that means 77% is in the bank, earning 1%, so that gives you 0 0.8. Let's say that you experimentally put 50,000 pesos in bonds, that's about 13,000 pesos, 13%. Uh, then you multiply that by 3% that you earn from bonds, you'll get 0 0.4 uh, from that segment of that portfolio. And then if you have 40,000 pesos in stocks, that's equivalent to something like 10% uh, of your portfolio, nine point something in stocks, and stocks are growing at 15% over time, then you multiply the 10 times the 15 and then you get uh, 1.5. So if you add up all the expected growth rates, you get 0 0.8 plus 0 0.4 plus 1.5. Your money will grow at the combined rate of 2.7. Okay, so that's because majority of your money is in the bank. So why don't we reduce this to 200,000 in the bank? Let's add some more money in bonds, 80,000 uh, or 90,000. Okay, so let's say 200,000 in bank, 80,000 in bonds, 90,000 in stocks. What's your your expected growth rates. Well, that's 51% uh, times 1% equals 0 0.5, 21% times 3% is 0 0.6, and 23% times 15% gives you 3.5. So if you add up all the percent, your money should be growing for per year. Is that okay with you? Um, maybe, yet. okay, so I'm suggesting because inflation in the Philippines is 5%, recently growing 6%, uh, put take take money out of the bank. Siguro, if you can survive with sixty thousand pesos, <laughs> no, not keep it eighty thousand pesos, and then your bonds keep it down to fifty thousand. So now you have. Oops, I think I mistyped something. Let's say okay. Um, Let's make it uh, 90 in the bank, zero in bonds, and 300,000. Okay, the math is correct. <laughs> 390 total uh, pesos, 1,000 uh, pesos. So that would be 23% in the bank and 11% in 77% uh, in stocks. Yung 300,000 would be 77% of your portfolio multiplied by the 15% expected growth. Then that portion of your portfolio would be growing at 0.5 plus the 0 0.2 here gives you 11.8. Ah, so that's the what you expect from the stock market in the, that's what I hope to, to get from the stock market over the next 15 years if I invest it intelligently in good stocks. Meanwhile, what's the best I can get from the bond market? Over here on the right, you can see that uh, in general, if you invest money in treasury bills for 30 days, 90 days, or 180 days, then the government will give you 1.3, 1.2, 1.7% per year, thereabouts. If you invest in government bonds for, say, three years, you might get 2.6. If it's five years, you might get 3.8. If it's a 20-year bond, you might get 5.1. Or if it's a 25-year bond, 5.2. What's the benefit of being in bonds? It's guaranteed by the government. You get 5.2%. Uh, for 25 years. If you want to sell the bond after the 10th year, you may, but then uh, you can sell it and just offer a discount. Um, but how good is 5.2% a year if inflation is 6? Uh, I'm afraid that you have to target something higher than 6, maybe 11.8, maybe higher. I'll give you examples later of stocks that give you more than 12% a year. Now, um, so we're now at the level where uh, you've decided that 90,000 pesos of your portfolio will remain in cash, zero in bonds, and 300,000 pesos in stocks. 
Yeah, so the 300,000 pesos is about 77% of your portfolio, and the remaining 23% is cash in the bank for your household needs. And this uh, 300,000 is growing, hopefully, 11 plus percent per year. So out of the money that you've allocated for stocks, what are the choices? Yeah, you have plenty of choices. Number one, you can buy preferred shares because preferred shares give you good cash dividends, sometimes 5% per year, sometimes 7%. We have a very nice uh, collection of preferred shares on the stock exchange that give you 5, 6, and 7% per year. Meanwhile, there are common shares that uh, you just have to choose wisely and then they can give you good returns. Some are good, some are bad. You just have to choose wisely. I'll show you some good examples later. And then there's mutual funds, which are a collection of various stocks or bonds. Uh, let me just talk now about equity mutual funds. Um, equity mutual funds can either be uh, automatically buying the top 30, such as the FM ETF, which is passively managed, meaning a computer adjusts the stock portfolio to always be exactly the same percent per stock as in the PSE index. You can find the PSE index on the front page of the website of the Philippine Stock Exchange. Go to pse.com.ph and ask, uh, may I see the PSEI, which is the index of the top 30? And then you will see that like 11% is in SM, 9% uh, is in Ayala Corporation, and then there's a whole list of top 30 stocks with their percentages. So the FMETF just copies those percentages. Now, there's also actively managed funds, which means they don't necessarily buy the top 30. They sometimes buy below the top 30. They buy any stock that they think will go up. And if they're successful, then they make 15% a year. If they're not so successful, they make just 1% a year. And <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that's been the trend for the past five years because the stock market in 2013 went up very high to the 7,000 level. And five years later, where are we? So bandang 7,000 level also. So it practically went sideways uh, the past five years. So the mutual funds, unfortunately, are showing 1% gain per year for the past five years. But uh, check back longer term and you will see that stocks actually went up 12% a year for the past 15 years. Anyway, moving on to the next example, After, below mutual funds I have this box for UITF. UITF is a product of the bank trust department. They, they have a trust uh, account which they open to the public and they sell units. Therefore, it's a unit investment trust fund. And if they're expert, then the money can grow hopefully 10% a year if uh, conditions are good. Meanwhile, there's such a thing called a trust account, which means that a, a parent will set aside money in a, in, a, in a bank account, which is not a deposit account, but rather it's a trust account. So this parent will tell the bank, in case anything happens to me, please take care of my children. Pay for their tuition, give them allowance, uh, whatever they need, uh, pay, pay for it, and here's the money that I, that I hereby deposit for their benefit. That's called the trust account. It was invented in the year 1100. Whenever a no nobleman would go out to war, he is not sure of coming back. So he deposits money with a friend and say, in case I die, uh, please take care of my widow and the children. <laughs> and that's the origin of the trust account. Um, so most of the trust accounts are one per family. <laughs> one per family, pero yung UITF is open to the public. Okay, next. Below UITF, I have a box for investment accounts. That's, that's what a private bank can give you. What do they charge? 4% a year? Ah, uh, that's too much. And the minimum is usually $5 million. So I think that, um, let's cross that out. Moving on to the next example. So you have variable unit link insurance, which I said is Mm, sounds good in principle, but you better check when when they put money in the investments mismo. Baka they're putting money first in the in the insurance muna before they actually put any money in the investment funds. In which case, it's going to be the second or third year before any of your money starts to grow over time in an investment fund. If I were you, if I may suggest, I would put I would buy insurance from them. Tapos, and then I would buy investment funds 
which will make my money grow over time. So hiwalay dapat si insurance and investment fund. I'm, I'm afraid they might get mad at me for pointing this out, pero uh, so bahala na. So <laughs> uh, it's for your benefit that I'm saying this. Okay, I'm gonna move to the next slide that uh, tab that shows to you what are the uh, stocks which have done well over time. Oops, uh, just try to make it bigger. Okay. Okay, so here's the, some of the stocks that have done well over time. These are some of the Philippine stocks that back in 2003, in the example of Jollibee, it was 14 pesos per share. Now it's recently, it was 290. So therefore, it went up 22% a year. Okay. Uh, it went up 22% per year for the past 15 years. Would you like some of your money to grow 22% per year? I mean, raise your hand if you do. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, are you familiar with Jollibee? Do you think that its sales are good and strong and that does it have a bright future? If yes, then you buy some shares. Next time you feel hungry buying some Jollibee food, uh, think to your brain, I better buy some Jollibee shares first and then buy Jollibee food. So this stock was 14 pesos per share 15 years ago. Now it's 290. So what happens to your money if you start with 14,000 and now it's 290,000? Ang tawag doon, 22% per year ang tinaas. How nice is that? Now, the only problem is, is that guaranteed? Of course not. It's not. It, it depends on whether Jollibee sales are strong and whether they're expanding overseas. Are they? I think yes. So you can bank on that. Next is Meralco. Who in the Philippines needs electricity? I think everybody. <laughs> Who in Metro Manila needs electricity? I think all of them. <laughs> so... Imagine that Meralco shares were 6 pesos per share in 2003, and now they're about 330. So what happens if you invest 6,000 pesos in Meralco back in 2003, and now it's 330,000? Ang tawag dun, tumaas, uh, tumaas yung investment mo ng 31% per year for 15 years. How nice is that? I think that's very nice. I think that uh, I think Meralco is guaranteed to have sales because everyone needs electricity in the city. I think you would rather not be uh, lighting candles or Coleman lamps in your house. Ayala Corporation used to be 95 pesos per share back in 2003, and now it's uh, between 900 and 1,000. So I would say it went up between 15 and 17 percent per year for the past 15 years. Look at GT Capital. It started at 455 in the year 2012. Now it's uh, somewhere around 900. So that's about 13, 14 percent per year. Look at SM Investments. Uh, it used to be 118 per share. Now it's about 900, fluctuating uh, between 900 and 1,000. So it's it made your money grow 19 percent per year for the past 12 years. So are, is there a way in the Philippines to make money grow 19 percent per year? Well, here's one example: see SM Investments. Except that it's not guaranteed. You have to take a chance. You have to be brave. Buy the shares at 118 pesos per share in 2006 and hang on for 12 years. It's not a waste of time. Your money, your 118,000 pesos can grow to be 956,000 pesos. So it's not a waste of time. Even though you're waiting a long time, your money grows 19% per year. See, with Aboitis Equity Ventures, those who bought the shares in 2009 at 5.7 pesos per share, well, uh, recently it was 61. So that's about 30% per year growth. These are wonderful opportunities in the Philippines, except that you have to be brave to buy the stock and you have to wait for many, many years. Well, take a moment. Wilcon Depot, uh, 455, and now recently it's about 10. So that's about 120% per year. Uh, sorry, September na tayo. Okay. And then JG Summit is the owner of Cebu Pacific, one peso per share. I think recently it's uh, 55 or something. Uh, what if it's 55, some around 28% per year. So uh, the, meanwhile, the top 30 stocks in the Philippines was at 1,400 points back in 2003, and now they're at 7,338 points or 383 points today. So that's about 12% per year. Isn't that better than bank deposit giving 1% a year or bonds giving 5%? What's the catch? You have to invest for long term. 
uh, I suggest 15 years. And then your money grows average of 12, sometimes 15. Let's, let's check San Miguel Corporation. Invest in San Miguel Corporation in 2014 at 58 pesos, and now it's uh, 139. Anong tawag dun? 24 percent per year. How nice is that? There's more examples. Si BPI from 16 pesos a market ng 109. That's 14 percent per year. What's the catch? You have to wait 15 years. Pero your money grows 14 percent a year. Same with Banco de Oro, 14 percent. Metro Bank is a little behind schedule. So, ikaw bahala if you want to buy the slow-moving Metro Bank, pero I think that it's got the best potential because it's the slowest moving so far. DM Consonhi, 27% per year. Semirara, 25. So, madaming example. Si Tar Harbor Tugs, 100% per year. DNL, 38% per year. And Pure Gold, 24% per year. Meron pang Macro Asia. Uh, this is a stock in the Philippines which does car wash for airplanes <laughs> and maintenance of the engines, etc. Magkano yung share price niya last year? 2 pesos. Umakyat ng 25. So, ang tawag doon is 1,000% in one year. Bakit hindi sinabi sa akin yung mga opportunities na to? Eh, you have to be experimentally in stocks for you to experience that. Now, I'll show you, just for comparison, meron namang ibang stocks sa... Uh, Sa labas ng Pilipinas, meron tayong Facebook. <laughs> if you play Facebook every day or that's your your computer interaction, it's now $193. It used to be 28 That stock went up 38% a year. I mean, just to show that what stocks can do, not only in the Philippines but in the rest of the world, Apple computer used to be $1 per share. 15 years later, uh, this year, it's $184 per share. Uh, uh, what do you call that gain? That's 42% per year. So, uh, there's many interesting uh, opportunities available out there. You have to just be brave and dare to buy the stock and hang on for years if you think that it has a bright future. Do you believe the Philippines has a bright future? Uh, this is not a poll. This is a question. You have to answer me whether you think the Philippine economy can grow 6% a year consistently or maybe go up to 8% per year. If that's the case, how come your money is only growing 1% a year? Why don't you make it grow, try to grow at least 8% per year? Uh, how do I do that? Well, you have to start buying a few experimental uh, stocks. So I'm going to show you some, uh, some stocks that you can buy on this experimental portfolio. Uh, let's say that you have never, ever bought a stock before. What am I going to buy? So just for the sake of example for beginners, you can buy one Meralco, one Jollibee, and then one other stock that you choose. Approximately, it will cost you 10,000 pesos for beginners. Tapos, you can buy five holding companies plus telecoms that will give you nice cash dividends. Magkano yan lahat? Mga 37,000 pesos. Ayan, meron ka ng stock portfolio. If you want to be more um, economical in the sense of following the economy, then look at the eight sectors that represent the economy, energy, food, telecom, property, banking, mining, fuel, uh, construction. So you have to buy, say, Meralco, JFC, Tel, or Globe, Ayala Land, or Robinsons, Metro Bank, or BPI, Semirara, or some other mining company, Petron, or Shell, DMCI, or Mega White. Magkano yan lahat for a minimum board lot, this will probably cost you 23,000 pesos, this collection of uh, eight stocks, okay? Uh, I think that's good enough for starters, and then you can add as you go along. Now, if you want to, to cop, if you want to follow what the brokers recommend, which is, the, the, sometimes they say, these are my stock recommendations, these are the ones that I think will go up the fastest. Yeah, so therefore, um, these are the ones that I think will grow up the fastest. So I put 10% of my money in Ayala Land, San Miguel, Globe Telecom, etc. Just memorize this list. These are some of and these are some of the stocks which uh, brokers recommend. And um, and on that basis, you could buy these so-called these winners. Now let's take a look at the uh, what happens if I buy the top 30. Then, uh, if I buy the top 30, what was their index points in 2003? That's a 1,000. And today, they are at 7,383. So, therefore, a market yan ng 14% per year for the past 15 years. 
14%. I wish my money was growing 14%. Well, all you have to do is buy the top 30. Now, how do I do that? Either you buy the top 30 one by one or you buy them in one basket. So example, if you uh, want to buy the top 30, what's the names on the list? Well, there's, see all the names on this list? There's uh, Globe Telecom, there's GT Capital, DMCI Holdings, there's um, LT Group, there's PLDT, etc. So all of these names, you want to buy them, a good idea, because they're the top 30. Okay, so what's the benefit of buying them one by one? If you do buy them one by one, you will receive cash dividends from the likes of Globe, PLDT, Meralco. What's the, what's the cost? Well, 30 transactions and 30 commissions to buy the top 30 stocks. It's just um, tedious. Now, if you want to buy the top 30 in one basket, you probably should get the FM ETF, which is a mutual fund which is listed on the PSE, and it contains the top 30 stocks. So what's the benefit? It's easier to track the top 30 stocks. Sila nang bahala mag-invest sa top 30. And what's the disadvantage? You don't receive the cash dividends directly, but rather the FM ETF fund receives the cash dividends and it uses the cash to buy more of the top 30 stocks. And in terms of the, the management fee, it's the lowest in the industry. It's like 0.5% a year, unlike other mutual funds that charge 2% a year. Okay, so that's the meaning of exchange traded fund. It's a mutual fund which is listed on the exchange and then it allows you to buy the top 30. Okay, next. Um, what's the next best method of you buying your own stocks? You trying to learn how to be uh, buying your own stocks. You, uh, let's say you have another 100,000 that you want to buy, put in stocks. I would recommend that you put it in conglomerates. And just look at this list. These are the conglomerates. Kaunang bahala mag-decide what percent for each individual company. You decide which one you trust the most and then you assign bigger percentage to them, et cetera. Just, just for example. Number two, if you have another 100,000, I suggest you put it in consumer trends. Like for example, Jollibee, Pure Gold, Universal Urbina, et cetera. So this would be the consumer stocks. Next, if you have another 100,000, why do you park it in property and real estate? Because they're on the way up. It's up what percent you put in each of these uh, stocks on this list. You you can put 10% each or 20% for some and zero for others. It's up to you. The third category is infrastructure, which I think will be on the way up the next five years. So you choose which among them you think will move up the fastest. Now, category number five is energy and electricity. I think that you should have investments in this field because the country needs lots of energy and electricity. Number six is transport and telecom uh, because the country needs plenty of uh, fuel for and trucks and trains and airplanes so therefore logistics and transportation and cargo are very important for our national development next is banking the more money uh, will lead to more business and more economic activity we need more money for that and more transactions therefore more banking so choose which banks you will put your money in let's say you have another hundred thousand for banks you decide should I put it in the top three banks or the top five banks or the top seven? It's up to you. Now, mining and minerals, it's a difficult sector. Probably I'll put some money in Semirara and Nickel Asia. It's up to you. You can research it on your own and decide which ones have the best um, prospects for the near future. Now, Menopang technology and computers, if you're tech savvy, then you can decide which one of the semiconductors or hardware or software companies are on the way up. So these are the uh, choices for beginner's portfolio. And uh, it's up to you whether you want to buy them yourself. Kaya naman. Remember that uh, it's very simple to buy shares of stock. Just open an account with some broker and start buying stocks online. And then uh, accumulate over time. I suggest that you have a very long-term time horizon. Um, if you want your money to grow approximately 15% a year, I suggest 15 years time horizon. I don't mean that you will hold the stocks exactly 15 years, but rather that you plan on being invested for 15 years so that you get the benefit of the average 15%. Um, on some years, it will be less than 15, other years more than 15, it averages to, to 15. Now, 
if you have a 20-year time horizon, which means that you're probably um, a 40-year-old person and you're saving for your retirement at age 60. So that's about 20 years. By the time you're 60, you're hoping to retire, which means you have enough money to keep you going until you're 80. Yeah, so that's why by the age of 60, you should have, I suggest, 20 million in the bank because the cost of living will be 1 million a year and you have about 20 more years to live. If you live to be 90, uh, swear to more that you live to be 90, but you'll have no more money at, from age 80 to 90. So dapat kung ganon, target to have more than just 20 million in the bank. And the way I suggest to do that is to, as a young person of age 20, 25, 30, I suggest that you start investing like 30,000 pesos per, per year in stocks and invest it in good stocks that hopefully that have the promise of delivering 15% per year based on their track record and based on their earnings per share growth. And then I hope that you will get uh, an average of 15. You just have to be very brave to buy the stock and very patient to wait 15 years. Anyway, if you're 20 years old or 25, you are saving money for your retirement, which will happen when you're 60 years old. And by the time you're 60, I hope that you have 30 million in the bank and you can only get that big savings if you start now by saving 30,000 pesos per year. You know that if you multiply 30,000 times 1.15 to the 30th power, I think you will get 2 million. Uh, so that's the, the importance of being patient. Um, my last slide, Siguro, no, no, I still have the PowerPoint. This this slide will, will tell you that um, there are all kinds of investments. Merong low risk, merong high risk, merong low return and high return. Now, yung cash is what you have right now. I suppose you have money in the bank earning 1% a year. If you're not satisfied with that, then you probably should put some money in bonds, which give you 3 to 5% a year. And then if you're not satisfied with that, put money in blue chips, which have the potential, at least some good blue chips give you 15% per year long term. And the mga second liners na very active, like uh, si Macro Asia, Wilcon Depot, and other good examples, they've given more than 20% per year, sometimes more than 100% per year. So those are ex exceptions, but if you do manage to catch them, uh, then lucky for you. But you have to be brave and buy the stock and wait a year or wait a few years for you to get the, the return. And it's by no means guaranteed. It's risky, but it's fun, and I, I promise you that you will learn a lot. <laughs> you will learn a lot. You might learn how to how to uh, deal with frustration. Wait, I have a few more uh, slides to share with you about uh, how to how to finalize your decision making. Uh, somewhere here towards the end. Okay, okay. So, so which is better? Should I should I invest on my own or invest with an expert? Okay, this is a quiz. Okay. Well, um, well, because uh, if I rely on an expert, it's easier for me, uh, and it's a low, lower cost, and you get decent returns. But if you trade by myself, buy and sell you will exert a lot more effort and it will cost you a lot of time. You might begin to wonder if it's worth it. Okay, so it's a lot easier to rely on an expert, less stress. But, uh, uh, okay, so should I invest in stocks on the left? It says on your own. Okay, if you invest on your own, then it requires effort, skills, background in finance, willingness to learn. It's like learning how to drive a car. It takes years before you're expert. Meanwhile, should I in invest my money via an expert? It requires less effort, less skill on your part. You don't have to have any background on investments. You just be willing to trust the expert and trust the economy. Okay, in, in principle, I think it's a good idea to invest first via an expert and then later on, as you become more familiar, you start buying your own stocks. Now, do you want to buy your own stocks? This is usually uh, required by people who are restless, driven, they want control, and they trust no one. Is that you? Then you have to buy your own stocks. If you know how to trust an expert, then go ahead and uh, put put your money in, in a mutual fund or a UITF. You, you sort of have to relinquish control 
uh, but you just have to trust the expert he will do what is best um, do you want to save time and money then you uh, wait a minute uh, do you want to you don't mind exerting effort you don't mind exerting time uh, and you don't mind the transaction costs uh, meaning if you trade frequently that would mean investing in stocks on your own whereas via an expert it, there's less effort less time less transaction costs wait a minute I am looking for the last few slides uh, ah. Do, how many more minutes okay so uh, I think you're wondering I think okay I, I'm gonna finish with uh, with uh, how the how the stock market looks like no okay here we go so uh, let me go with um, with the index okay somebody might be asking uh, what's the outlook for the index and will the stock market be moving up and what are the stocks to buy so let me uh, explain first that there's many kinds of stocks and the for me the best ones for beginners are in the PSEI which are the top 30 so go to the front page of pse.com.ph and click on PSEI that would be the top 30 stocks and you normally would see the price per share times the number of shares equals market value now if you add all the market value of the top 30 uh, wait a minute if you add all the market value of the top 30 it's the number here that says market value of free float okay market value that's billions of pesos you add it up it comes out to a big number okay so it comes out to trillions of pesos or or uh, dozens of billions of dollars okay so what we do what we should do is we add up all the market value of the top 30 and then uh, that normally equals many many billions of pesos now it's very difficult to talk of, of the progress of the stock market in terms of billions of pesos too many big numbers so as a shortcut the stock exchange decided in the 1970s let's just say whatever is the billion pesos of the top 30 let's set it equal to 100 points as a starting point so on uh, what in uh, 100 points on starting point so therefore if the stock market goes up 1% tomorrow then the index becomes 101 points now if on the second day the index goes up another percent so the index is now at 102 points I hope you follow starting point is 100 market share by percentage and then we are now at 7300 points so I believe that the market went up a lot since 1987 1988 and it's actually been up 8% a year from 1988 till the present so positive and um, it looks like this so it's on 1988 800 points on the index up to 3,000 down to 1,000 up again to 3,8 bumagsak uli ng 1,8 takot lahat nagsialisan tapos sumipa ng malakas sayang I wish I did not sell my stocks ganun talaga yung buhay uh, it's a very scary stock market but I've been watching this since 1988 <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how it can shoot up very far shoot down very far but that's not the end meron pa siyang shoot up unfortunately meron then shoot down and then finally uninterrupted bull run so ang galing ng bull run natin since 2008 I can actually divide the history of our stock exchange or a stock index from uh, phase one 1988 to 2003 no 2008 now para siyang ups and down up and down up and down it's like uh, the economy was very poor during that era but the economy started to rev up in 2003 so therefore I, I'm gonna draw a different box now where it's not anymore going up and down it's just going up and up up or higher and we we've, we've been up times 7.7 .7. you're lucky guys that you're now buying stocks in this era of the green box Na pataas lang siya ng pataas. I think that you don't want to be buying stocks in phase one. You're lucky that you're buying in phase two. Okay, so what do I think will be the future? I think it's up, up and up, or up and higher. What if it goes uh, down somewhat? Well, don't worry because the general trend is upwards. And then, uh, nandito na tayo ngayon sa 7,300. 
I'm hoping that if uh, all goes well, then maybe in two years' time you might see a number like 8,004, or if we're lucky by 2020, baka umabot ng 9,300. This is just a scenario. I'm not forecasting this. I'm just saying that uh, because of the zigzags of the stock market since 2013, it's possible that we will pick ourselves up from the bottom of 6,900, keep moving up to maybe 7, 5 uh, end of the year, maybe 8,500 next year. Uh, at one point in the future, maybe two years from now, we might be at 9,300. I think it's consistent with the technical pattern that we see here. Okay, so that's what I think is going to happen. And I think that, look at the year since 2014. I believe na pataas yan. This is my personal opinion. Um, other brokers may not share this, but I think this is what's going to happen to our stock market over the next 10 years. So I believe that you should be confident buying stocks for the next 10 years because our economy will be growing 6% a year, maybe 7, maybe 8, I don't know, maybe 10. Okay, so where are we headed uh, now? I think that, so this again is a, a review of our index since 2011. You notice it shot up very far in 2013. And then now we're at this area over here we're near the green line where everyone's nervous i think no need to be nervous i think it's going to go up and down and up but following this uh, red line and green line uh, will the stock market ever go down to six thousand and five thousand well maybe yes if there's a huge fight between us and china if there's uh, rockets being fired between north and south korea and japan and if there is a tremendous earthquake that hits uh, all of Asia, and also if the Philippine economy starts growing zero or negative five, then you will see the stock market going down to 6,000 or 5,000. But I don't believe that any of those scenarios are going to happen. I think that, um, skip, uh, here. So I think what's gonna happen is probably, so here we are in September. Oops, okay, so here we are in September. I think we're, here, bandang 7,300. I think eventually, I don't know what year, pero we're moving to maybe 8,900 points if we're lucky. Uh, because I think that there's going to be an impetus moving from this bottom here, this green circle, to this red square. And then after reaching that red square, it's going to rest for a while, maybe go down to 8,000 level. And maybe it will have the impetus and impulse to shoot up again to maybe something like 9,300 points by 2020. So this is just one scenario. If you disagree, you can make your own drawing. We can fight over it, we can debate. But I think that my scenario is realistic. What's its basis? My basis is the economy is growing 6%. Yung stock market actually should be only in the green circles, okay? Para saan yung red squares na yan? Those red squares are moments of extreme excitement when people think, wow, the Philippine economy is growing. We're going to have lots of infrastructure. Tapos, the moment you reach the red square, people ask, nasa na yung infrastructure? Nandiyan na ba? Wala pa eh. Oh, bagsak yung stock market back to the green circle. And then people get excited again. Oh, I heard that uh, we're going to have uh, lots of build, build, build. Wow, exciting. So, umakit yung share prices to the red square. And then, uh, the newspapers ask, kamusta yung train system to Clark? Kamusta yung train system to Bicol? Ay, wala pa. Five years from now pa eh. Ah, ganun ba? Benta ko muna yung stocks ko. And then, I'll, so every, all the stocks go back down to the green circles. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I, the green circles here is the area where the stock ex stock market index is at rest, meaning it's uh, fairly valued. And uh, the red squares are those areas when the stock market is extremely excited because they think the build, build, build is tapos na, hindi pa pala nag pisa. Okay, so tataas din yung stock market, but not over five months. I think it's over five years. So I, if you are willing to be patient, you keep buying stocks whenever it's below uh, 7,005, and then wait for it to rise to 8,000 to 9,000. I don't know when, maybe one year from now, maybe two years from now, but I believe it's going to happen because we have a good and strong economy, and it's uh, going to be 
stronger over time. It's not like in the 1980s when we were weak, uh, but now we have a very strong private sector. I think, uh, let's see. Oh, here's the basis. Economy is growing six, maybe 7% per year. We overcame the difficulties of the 1990s and the 2000s when the economy was growing 4% a year. Now, dito na tayo sa 6% per year. If we're lucky, we shoot up to 8% per year, hoping for stronger exports, stronger mm, construction work, more tourism, more consumer goods, uh, everything moving well together. And it doesn't depend on the government huh? because this depends on the private sector. Okay, so um, again, this is just a personal scenario. I don't know if this is going to be true or not. I'm hoping it will be true, but uh, it's up to you whether you think the Philippines can improve its GDP performance. If that's the case, I think your money should also be growing 8, 9, 10% per year. Don't be satisfied with 1%. If you know how to buy your own stocks, go ahead and buy your own stocks. If you don't know how, you buy an investment fund. What's the objective? You save money until you're 60 years old. By the time you're 60 years old, dapat retired ka na. Dapat meron ka ng pera sa banko. Probably, which is better, to have 10 million in the bank or 30 million? I think 30 million sounds nicer. Pero to earn 30 million in the bank, you have to start saving now. Save money now and let it grow 10, 12, 15% using good stocks. I think that's the only uh, easy way to make money grow. The only other ways that you can make money grow is business. You start your own business, then you can make millions, good for you, or real estate. Bili ka ng lupa or magpatayo ka ng condominium building if you have the millions and then you sell it for billions. And that's uh, those are three good ways. But if you don't have the millions, you just have the thousands. Dito muna tayo sa stocks. If you don't understand stocks or you're not, you're very confused, you start muna with investment funds. Okay, thanks very much for listening.